Hi, this is Jay Fleming. I'm the senior developer with Lulea Media, and this is the Child Theme Configurator quick start video. So we're going to go right to Tools, Child Themes, and this is what you see if you have not installed any Child Themes yet. You just have the Parent Child tab available and then a bunch of options. The first thing you want to do is select the Parent Theme that you want to make a Child Theme of. Click on the Parent Theme menu and you'll see uh, one of the things we've added is a preview of the themes that you can choose from. I've got a bunch loaded here and I've got 2015 loaded. 2015 is um, coming out in version 4.1 and you'll see that it automatically loads a child theme name here based on the parent theme that you select. But you can change it if you want to. So you could just actually type in something else if you want. New and then for author, that's completely up to you. Inversion is really for your own internal tracking, but it is a required field for the child theme style sheet. One of the new options that we have added is this ability to copy your parent theme options. And what that'll do if you check the box is, is copy the menus and widgets and other things like background, header image over to the child theme. The next is this parent style sheet handling option. In earlier versions of Child Theme Configurator, um, it would automatically create an add import statement in the style sheet. There's a lot of movement away from that now. So we're giving you the option to link the style sheet via the WordPress in queue system. You can choose add import if you're using an older theme that hardwires the style sheet and doesn't use the in queue feature. And you can also select none if you know that your theme is already handling all the styles automatically and you don't need to worry about the parent style sheet at all. If you don't know what to put here, don't worry about it. Just choose link and you should be all good. Um, this last thing is parse additional style sheets. This is available for themes that put all their core styles into separate files. Child Theme Configurator will automatically parse the parent style sheet, uh, the style.css file. A lot of themes are no longer using that for their their styles. Instead, they're putting their styles in a separate f file or group of files. What this allows you to do is select those so that they get loaded into the configurator for you to customize. In this 2015 theme, you can see that one of these is checked. This would be a style sheet that gets loaded the way the theme is set up now. If you know that you need to parse additional style sheets, you can check them here. So we're just going to leave this alone and click regenerate slash rebuild child theme files to generate your child theme. So what this has done is it's created a new directory under your themes directory to contain all the child theme files. So now you have this additional menu that has the existing child themes that you have set up. So we just added this new 2015 child. You can see it's just like the other menu where it gives you a preview. Before you activate your child theme you're going to want to go to Live Preview and test it first. The reason I recommend that you do this is because if there's anything wrong with your child theme that is going to keep it from working correctly, you're going to know that before you activate it by using the Live Preview. So if, for example, the parent styles weren't being loaded correctly, you would see a generic unstyled version of the page here. Or if there was something causing the theme to completely break, uh, it would crash here, but it wouldn't crash your, your main website. So if everything looks good, then you can activate it here. After you've created your first child theme, you will notice there's a bunch of new options. These tabs across the top, Query Selector, Rule Value, Import, Child CSS, Parent CSS, and Files. And we're going to go over each one of these as we go along in the tutorial. The other thing you see is that now you've got some additional options down here. You can back up your current style sheet which means that you can make a copy of the style sheet in its current state and then reload it uh, so that you can kind of save it at a certain point in case you need to go back to it. Likewise, there's now this reset and restore where you can actually reset all your changes to the defaults, basically back to the parent themes settings. So just to show you how that works, we're going to actually create a backup here and we're going to rebuild the child theme. So it did the same thing, it, it reparsed everything, but now we have a backup file. So if you go down to this restore from backup, 
you're going to see that you have this backup option down here. So if you make a bunch of changes, you don't like what you've done, uh, you want to go back to a certain point, you have this to go back to. And you do the same thing, just select that and hit Generate Rebuild again. So one of the common things that people want to do when they uh, have a parent theme is change the color of certain things, backgrounds, uh, font, text, whatever. And the Child Theme Configurator makes it really easy to do that, either using the Query Selector menu or tab or the Rule Value tab. We're using the Rule Value tab here. So if you want to isolate a certain rule, such as color, you can just type color here. And it's going to automatically populate a menu with CSS rules that match the string you typed. So we're interested in color, which is actually the term for the font color. And it's going to load every style that it finds with a color attribute in the style sheet and show it to you. It also gives you a sample swatch so you can see the color actually in real time. And you can see that 2012 has a lot of grays. So one of the things I wanted to do in this demo was brighten this up a little bit. So we're going to look for the link text and make that change. So it looks like this blue is the link text. So we want to click the selectors link to see exactly which CSS selectors that it's modifying for that color. And you can see we have a number that show up here. It's going to be organized by selector and then uh, grouped by the query block or media query in the style sheet. Most of the time your styles are likely going to be under the base which is sort of the catch-all for any styles that don't actually have a specific media query associated with them. We just use the term base so that we have something to describe it with. So you can see that we have an anchor HTML element here and then a box for the child theme setting. Again, we have the swatch to show you in real time what the change looks like. And you'll also notice when you click on the box, if it is a color, it's going to automatically load the Iris Color Picker, which is a great plugin that came with the, I believe, 3.5 WordPress release. And it lets you just drag the color that you want to change. Like this, I want to pick a nice teal. So you can drag the hue over on the right and then select the actual shade you want by dragging this uh, little pointer. So we're going to get a little darker, and then you want to save that. And what that's going to do is update the Child Theme Configurator's internal configuration data. Um, it also updates at the same time the Child Theme style sheet. So if you go back to the tab that says View Child CSS, you'll see a new entry here for this anchor with a new color specified. So if we wanted to see what that looks like in action, we can do that using WordPress's great theme preview tool. We're going to go over here to Appearance and Themes, and you'll see that we have our new demo child theme. And you can click Live Preview to see what your changes look like. OK, so you can see wherever there was an anchor in the content, it's changed it to this teal color. And the great thing about the preview is that you don't actually have to activate your child theme until it's how you want it. So we've got this link here, we've got the header, got a couple more headers, and so it looks like it's gotten all the links except for these uh, sidebars, these links. What's going on with that? It's, it's not affecting these. And this is where the query selector comes in. So we did sort of a global change to the color, but it's not affecting everything. So we want to see what is causing that sidebar to ignore my change. Most likely it's going to be a style that is designed for the widgets, the sidebar widgets. So I'm just going to type widget here. This queries the configuration data for any selectors that match the string you type in. So we have a bunch of widget type styles here. So what we're looking for is a widget A, some kind of an anchor tag, and it looks like this is the one we want here, widget area, widget A. So it's going to load that style. It's going to give you the sample, which is a gray. And you can see that it's, you know, clearly it's not being overridden by the green or the teal that we selected. So let's go ahead and make that change as well. Um, if you want to get the exact color, hex color, you can copy it and paste it here. Or we're just going to do something that's close to it just for this demo. So I'm going to do that and then save it. 
Now if we go back to our themes panel and preview the demo. Okay, it looks like we got our sidebar colors fixed, but there's still some here that are not being affected. Okay, well that's one of the things that the child theme configurator is great at is finding those little corner cases. So let's go back and see if we can't find what is holding up our change here. So we know it's a widget, so we're going to start with that. And it's probably some variation of widget A. So you, you see down here we've got widget A hover and widget A visited, and which we didn't actually change. So we're going to first start with the hover state. And for the hover state, I want to do something um, a little different than the green we selected. I want to do uh, like a darker green, darker teal. Let's do something like that. And we'll make it, you know, a little darker. So let's make it much darker. There, okay. So that'll fix that. And then tuck widget again. And we have this visited. And I think that's the one that it was holding on to. It's a pseudo class that says if you visited this link, then use this style. So we're going to do that. And sure enough, it's this lighter gray, which is what we saw over there. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to grab this teal. Right there. Okay. And do something like that. And like I said, you can get the actual exact hex value if you want to make it consistent. I'm just doing it quickly here with using the iris color picker. So that's saved. You can see in our child CSS that we have all these widget area variations um, in the new style sheet that are overriding the parent. And we can view our change by going to themes and live preview. And now it looks like everything is fixed. And now when you mouse over the link, you get that darker teal. Okay, so let's say we want to change this header on the site. Let's see if we can find something that says, uh, you know, header uh, or entry post header, something like that. Um, let's see. Wow, we've got a bunch here. So here's entry header, entry title, and entry header, entry title A. So let's see what A says. Okay, that's basically just saying don't put an underline on it. So that's not what we want. Let's see what the other one does. Entry. I think that's the one we want. So I'm just going to make it simple and I'm going to say 1.75 M. Uh, 1.2 is fine. For line height. Actually, it needs to probably be a little higher than that. Let's just say 2 M for the line height. And then we wanted to make the font weight bold. So let's go ahead and make that uh, 700 and save. Okay, so we can go back and preview that. Let's see if that was in fact the style that we wanted. And sure enough, so we have our new header. It's a little bigger, it's a little bolder. Um, it has the new uh, mouse over. And I think that looks pretty good. So one more thing I want to show you while we're in that particular spot is how to remove styles. So let's say we had a, a style that we wanted to actually remove. So if you view the child CSS, you see we've got this entry header. Um, let's say we want to take the font weight off. And, you know, For some reason we decided that was too bold. We can go back to this entry header. entry title style that we updated and let's just take that off again and we'll let it just fall back to the original parent style so when you save it what it's going to do is because there's no value in this box it's going to update the configurator internal data and it's going to remove it from the child theme part of that so when you go back to the child CSS it just takes it out so that's the way you do it and you know some people have asked me okay how do you delete a style from the parent well you really shouldn't modify the parent um, but what you can do is override it like we did here earlier or set it to inherit, uh, something like that. So that would effectively deactivate whatever the parent was doing. Another thing we can do is use this 
at import rule to use custom web fonts. And this is something that uh, a lot of people ask about. So let's, let's just go over to, let's open a new tab here and jump over to Google Fonts. So we're going to go to google.com fonts and it's going to take us over here. Let's see, we've got a bunch here. I like this uh, Balthazar. We'll use that and I'm just going to say add to collection. And then you've got this tab use and it shows you how to use it. At import, that's what we want. Just grab that code and go back to your thing. Just paste it right in here. And when you save it, what it's going to do is it's going to add it to this child theme um, style sheet. So you can see right here it's loading this Google font. And what we can do is actually use this family. I'm going to copy that. And we have uh, the entry header, entry title still loaded from before. We're going to add a new rule here, font, family. And we're just going to paste that Balthazar in that we copied. Now you're going to notice that the font that we've imported now shows up in the preview. This is the Balthazar font. And this is actually a change that we made in a recent version of Child Theme Configurator. So let's just save that. And then we can go back to our preview. And now we have a web font being used for the header. And you'll notice that sometimes web fonts have di completely different kerning or, you know, that means space between the letters and actually appear, render smaller. Typically a serif font is going to render smaller than a sans serif font. That's just sort of a general trend. Um, so what we can do is go back and fine tune that later. A couple of things I wanted to go over uh, too is Child Theme Configurator has a couple of sort of internal syntaxes that it uses for things and one is the background image. A lot of times you'll see this um, in some themes where they use a gradient to style things like buttons and you can see that's the case here. What the child theme configurator does with gradients is it sort of condenses them down into three parameters. The origin, the start color, and the end color. And we really simplified it basically because the vast majority of the time gradients are going to be used in this way. There's going to be two colors. Um, typically it's going to be to do some kind of glossy button. And so we just try to make it simple. If you want to do more advanced type gradients, you'll have to create those some other way than the child theme configurator. So what, what happens here is we can go in and we can say wherever we see this uh, color combination change origin top to let's say we want to make it like a red button so we'll have a lighter red top and a darker red bottom and we'll save that so you see this menu toggle input all these different selectors. So if we go back over to Query Selector and say Toggle, you'll see it's loaded our color change. So on this we can go in and we can change the font color. Let's change that to white. And let's change the border. Uh, this is the other thing, is the border we also have sort of an internal syntax that we use because most of the time with border you're going to use a shorthand form and it'll be, you know, it's the width, style, color. So what we've done is just make that sort of the standard way that you do borders. Um, you can enter them in independently if you want, but it works a lot better if you just do it this way. Let's change this to two pixels. Let's say dotted just for fun and we'll just make it black. just for this example. So we can save that. So now our buttons have this gradient background red white type dotted outline border. So in our theme preview you'll see wherever there's a button we have this new style. The next thing is this new files tab. We had a lot of requests for people who wanted to be able to copy templates 
from the parent theme into their child theme and edit them. Uh, and I hadn't really thought of that. The original um, thought was for this to be a tool to edit the style sheet, but it sort of evolved into a tool to basically configure your entire child theme from templates down to style. So we went ahead and added this feature. So what it does is it scans the parent theme and creates this list of all of the templates that the parent theme is using for various things, um, you know, like the file not found template, the header, the footer, uh, default index page, all this stuff that WordPress uses automatically to generate the content, uh, you can now customize. So what you do is, let's say you want to edit this uh, sidebar content page template, you can copy that over your child theme and it will show up here under child templates now. And that means that it has actually copied the template verbatim over into the child theme so that you can edit it. And we've added a link to make it easy to go over to the editor uh, and it will automatically go to your child theme and you can see that the new sidebar content page template is now here. You can click on it and you can edit it um, by hand if you want. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that if your child theme is active and you make a change and that change ends up breaking WordPress or breaking PHP uh, because of a syntax error or a logic problem or some other bug, uh, it will break your site. So I always recommend that you do your changes on an inactive theme. Use the live preview tool under appearance to verify that it works and then you can go back and activate it. So now the new uh, child theme for responsive is using the child theme template, the child theme style sheet, um, and that, that one content template that we copied over, it will automatically use that instead of the parent themes template. That's just a function of child themes that's built into WordPress. It just all works. So there you go. That is how you copy templates. Let's go back to the child theme files page. The next thing we've added is the ability to upload images. So what we've done here is added a file uploader that uh, actually puts the images in a image directory in the child theme and not in the media library. Um, if you want to upload images for use in, in the site itself. Keep using the media library. Don't use this. This is really only specifically to be used by the style sheet. Okay, so we're going to upload an image to the child theme images directory. Click browse. It's just like any other file uploader. And I'm going to upload a background from the jQuery UI. Um, and it's going to put that image in the child theme images directory and you can click on it and it'll give you a live preview of the image um, so how do you use that well let's go back to query selector just for example and let's create a new theme so we're going to say um, stripey background, background, well, images, what is that, Let's copy this, Stripey background is using this image that we just uploaded into images directory. So it's a relative uh, path to the style sheet because it's actually in the child theme. I'm going to save that. Now if we load Stripey background, you'll see now we have this image repeating pattern that's available to you. And uh, you can do that with any images. Um, just for grins, let's do another one I've got loaded here. Let's, um, let's load the jQuery UI icon set. So click browse. Let's go down here. Find the. Let's see. I've got a bunch of stuff on my desktop. 
here we don't UI icons and load that so now you've got the icon set from the jQuery UI that's available for your styles as well um, one last thing that we've added is the ability to customize your screenshot and this is really not you know mission critical but it's useful so it gives you a view of the current screenshot you can click it enlarge it and see what you got here this is the screenshot that comes with the responsive theme and uh, let's say we want to customize it so I'm gonna click browse and I'm gonna load this picture of Sheldon Sheldon is my cat now Sheldon is the, the child theme screenshot there's Sheldon Hey Sheldon. So now over in appearance, Sheldon is the featured screenshot for my child theme. One more thing uh, to point out is that if for whatever reason you need to remove a template from the child theme, you can uh, by checking it here and clicking remove and it will just go away. Um, this is useful if say for example you decide to change the parent you want to use let's say uh, we go to let's load 2011 okay and then the files you'll notice that the templates are different they are the templates for the 2011 theme and let's say we copied this tag template over okay and then we change our mind. So we say, okay, I want to, I don't want to use 2011, I want to use 2012. So we go to 2012, and load that instead. So that's the new parent. We're still using the original child theme, responsive child. You'll see that it still has that original tag template from 2011. Well, that might create a problem because 2012 has its own tag and the code might be different. So what you need to do is delete that one and then copy the new one. You can also do the same thing with the images. So we decide we don't want these images in the way. We can remove those as well. And they just go away. Something else I want to point out under the files on the files page is that now your backup files are going to show up here in this child team file section. So if you want to get rid of an old backup file, you can just check it and then delete select it and it'll get rid of it just like it would for any other child theme file. We've also added the ability to export your child theme as a zip archive. So if you wanted to save the entire set of changes that you've made and then move it over to another WordPress site, uh, you can do that by just clicking export and it'll create a zip file you can save um, and then you can load that on another site just like you would load a new theme. Well that's about it for this tutorial. If you have any questions uh, please drop us a line on our website. Uh, you can fill out the contact form or you can send us an email to solutions at and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.